you're on. Hello, this is Eric Donaldson reporting from Rochester, Minnesota, where we know what lies in the shadow of the Corn Cob Tower. We're here at the Viking Lounge to meet a couple of my backgammon buddies. I have some ideas about the meaning of backgammon for the TV show Lost. Come on, let's go meet the guys. Hey guys, what's up? Hey Eric. Play a little BG. Thanks for coming out. What brought you uh, here? <laughs> Thanks for coming out on the crack of noon on a Sunday to uh, play some BG with me. Uh, all right, everybody, we're making a little podcast, I guess you'd call it, or an instructional video for lost fans about backgammon. This is my brother, Mark Donaldson. This is my friend, Ray Bills. They're both uh, very good backgammon players. And I thought I would ask them to kind of explain the game for us. And as we go along, I'm going to throw in the lost references. <laughs> <laughs> for example, we've got one side light, the other side dark. Let's start at the beginning, though. Um, what do you guys know about backgammon, like its history? Um, I know it's an old game. What do, you, do you know anything about that? Or, Ray, you probably know more about it than I do. Um, well, backgammon's been around since uh, uh, a couple thousand, three thousand years ago, a long time ago. There's a story that says that the guards that were uh, gambling over uh, Christ's robes were playing backgammon to uh, decide <laughs> who got the... the Keep know, the robes? Ro whatever, you know, his, they took off of his body. Nice, I didn't um, know that. Uh, the sets in, uh, so the game originated in uh, the Middle East and uh, the original sets are all made of wood and uh, uh, wooden checkers. Very Stones, do they call them sometimes? Well, sometimes, yeah, in the olden days, uh, uh, the expensive ones, you know, if you were a merchant or a, a prince or somebody, you might have them made out of uh, any type of uh, stone or, or metal even. So and you call them checkers or men, they're sometimes called too, right? Yep, and, and if you look on the back side of a uh, chessboard, you get one of those mm -hmm. five-in-one game sets uh, for Christmas. So you look on the back, you'll see a backgammon board with all the funny-looking points. Mm -hmm. and you use the checkers from the checker set on there, and that's where the term checkers came from. But uh, for the people that don't play checkers, they tend to call them stones. Okay. Well, for the purposes of our discussion, let's call them men. And uh, let's kind of go over how many men are on each side, how many points are on the board, the point, the, the objective of the game, and uh, that kind of business. You were explaining to Benji earlier, Mark, about, uh, well, let's start. Uh, well, we're kind of in the middle of a game here, and I got it. But it illustrates it. Yeah, yeah, it illustrates it well. So there's, uh, the board is made up of uh, 24 of these things that look like little arrows, and they're called mm -hmm. points. So 24 points, and uh, there's six points in each of the four quadrants of the board. And it's a game of contact and, and dominance. Uh, they, they teach uh, backgammon in the military college uh, to understand the risk-reward, sacrifice. Um, okay. Uh, so we'll, you, we'll, we'll get more into that later, okay. but I wanted to start with um, yeah, so anyway, this, 15 men on a side. So there's 15. 24 points in a board. Numbers are and, important in backgammon, aren't they? In this position, we'll show you the setup position. Yeah, could you could you do that, actually? just Can you st stop this game sure. you're in and just uh, give me the starting position? This one will be over in a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, go ahead. Play it, play it out. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of... Uh, we'll kind this will uh, be over soon. <laughs> this will all be over soon. We'll go to the end and then play this backwards, but I yeah. wanna, we'll get back to the beginning position. Now, give me a little play-by-play -play of what's going on here. All right, and this, so, these are the kind of things I want right, to so explain the vernacular we're going to be using about blocks what's, and What's happening and, here is I just made a move that's uh, uh, trying to go for the race. And... Uh, uh, and so Mark has to try and decide if he wants to take a risk by putting me back where he would expose okay. his own checker, which would, if I hit, he would then uh, lose a lot in the race, okay. or if he just wants to go ahead for the race at this point. So it's a risk-reward thing. Yeah. And okay, yeah, so, oh, so yeah. right now, I'm, I'm looking at my race potential. I'm looking at, I could hit him. But I would have to take a risk of he, him hitting me back to 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 hit him. Okay. So 
I'm looking at, well, what's my race like? What if I don't hit him? You know, what if I don't take that risk? What if I just, you know, let, let's say we just play a race from here on out. And, and a race means you've kind of lost contact. Is, your two armies have lost contact, and you're yeah. just running for home. That, yes. Every right. game eventually turns into a race. And and every point up to the, from the start of the game to the point where it turns into an all-out race, you're trying to gain as much advantage in that race. Think about like you're trying to, I'm racing against you and I'm trying to put stones in your pockets and, and, and you know, <laughs> armor on you and, him, and I'm trying to trip you and tie your shoelaces together and, and we're doing that to each other. And so at the end it might be that we're both crawling around, we're actually crawling <laughs> on the Towards sand. The all right, all right. And, 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 or it might be that we're both in uh, rocket ships. Yeah. I love the idea of the, you know, analogies with Lost here, but let's, let's start it, well, we'll let you finish this game, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, maybe our audience can kind of see why I'm excited to talk about the strategy of backgammon that happens at an advanced level and not just at the beginning level. A lot of beginning players don't even know about the cube and how that works to double the stakes in a game. Um, I want to talk a little bit eventually about match play versus money play. I do have kind of an outline here that's going to start with the basics. Um, a little bit what we've talked about, we'll go over that again for beginners. And then uh, what else are we going to get into? The cube and match play. Um, and then I, yeah, I want to get into the philosophy of Lost and I want to um, bring it home with uh, the kind of stuff you're talking about though, where it's, um, uh, you know, the strategies, the, um, I, I just was watching that Bob Coca versus Gus Hansen tape and there was a thing called a double bluff. And I didn't realize how much um, kind of poker, um, not oh, manipulations, but uh, wow. kind of mind games that they'll play on each other too, right? The commentators got a little excited about excited the blind. about that. I think mm -hmm. they've got to make it exciting too. But yeah, no, there's. After we're done here. After mm -hmm. I get done kicking Ray's ass, um, <laughs> we'll show you what the, the setup position is. Yeah. You know, and and where where we start. Oh, this is good. This will get us kind of loosened up here for uh, going through it point by point. Well, the most important point to remember is that Mark is just a lucky son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> ah, luck. Now, um, I'll jump to the end. This is one of the questions I had for you at the end. But you know, one of the things I like about backgammon versus chess is that it's got luck involved. And chess is such a pure mental game that when I lose that, I feel worse than when I lose a backgammon game. Do you guys play chess at all? Chess or is for pussies. Pussies, really? Yeah. Isn't it just purely intellectual, purely mathematical? Well, no. There's no, um, I mean, when seriously, when you sit down in a chess game, the best player will generally win right. that game. In backgammon, uh, you know, we rate a player's strength on the history of your relationship with him. <laughs> All right, let's. And Ray go. and I have a lot of history, but let's go there. I remember first meeting you guys at a chouette down at um, Shenanigans or something. And uh, Ray, you kind of started the Rochester Backgammon Club. And Mark, you were kind of. Did you learn from Ray, or you, did you learn uh, before you met Ray? Where were you guys at when you first started Ray playing? Ray is the godfather of our club, yeah. Ray started it all. Someday you will be called upon. <laughs> Someday you will be called upon too, my friend. All right, what happened that what happened right there? Was there a turn of fortune? I see a cube well, has yes. been presented. Um, well, <laughs> so when you turn when it turns into a straight race, mm -hmm. uh, the luck pretty much is removed. Okay. And so I mean the, the luck the skill is removed. All that remains is, is luck. There's a small amount of skill in Bearing in, off in very and little that. bit. So let's say that at the point where it's a straight race uh, is 98% luck okay. from that point on. And we use numbers a lot. And so what this means is that Mark went from a position where he was losing <laughs> to where he was winning. <laughs> That's the and, cube. and there was only luck involved in between there. Now I'm not saying that he was lucky <laughs> for this to happen, but his uh, good fortune <laughs> smiled uh, him. He put himself in the position that fortune could rain down upon I him. I put myself in the position where I could get lucky too, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, so that's what I just said. So oh, okay. you're dropping okay. that? Yeah. All right. All right. So you drop, oh. so you have to pay him too, right? Yep, two points. All right, All right. So now this is the beginning position. Every both sides.